under 10 seconds will start. All right, the time is up and let us start. The countdown is over. And uh, hello and welcome to Vedas Chess Hub. Today is the lecture for the A batch guys and you all know by now the agenda. The agenda is quite simple. We are going to go through four sample games. We call them the study games. And uh, they are four in number. There is There are three videos I'm going to share with you. I'm sure we all are missing our hub. So that's uh, something to look forward to. I'm going to share three videos of our little champions. And I, I, I was so happy when I decided that I would show this today because it's reminiscence, the word I use. Just happy memories. We all are missing the hub. And so I'll share three videos. In addition to this, I am going to uh, go through a couple of positions for draw or stalemate. So in a losing position, that's the last resort. We have to uh, make sure that we know some tricks about getting away with a draw or a stalemate. And uh, thank you so much all of you for joining on time. Um, Alison is done with her work, I suppose. And uh, we will get started with our first game. You may or may not have the notepad handy because there are four games. So I don't think that I'm going to give you extra time for writing the moves. So it's okay. You can watch the video again. Do it that way. And uh, here is the first game. E4, E5 is the start. And uh, it is going to be from the white perspective. In fact, all the four games that we will study will be from the white's perspective. Let's get started with the game. At the moment, you can see it's e4, e5, pretty standard stuff. Knight c3, well, that's a very nice surprise. If you want to play something different, well, go for the Vienna game. Knight c3 followed by f4. Let's see what happens here. So in this case, it's the complete opposite. Normally, it is white attacking the spawn on e5 and the black player defending it. But this time you see what has changed is that the white player is defending the pawn on e4 while the black player is actually attacking the pawn. So that's the fundamental difference. Here, white is on the defensive. f4 would lead to a Vienna game here. You can check that out on leeches you can practice it f4 the idea is to get the, the open f file and then after castling your rook becomes very active so that's the plan there not in this game though the normal bishop to c4 black took the pawn now here is the thing this is for the b batch guys they must be pulling their hair out because they will be thinking what he is giving the knight for the pawn but no, it's a very important move and I'm sure that you would uh, appreciate it because I'll show you. It's not so simple. It's not just a piece loss here. Because if this is played, then black has d5, which is a very important form. So I'm sure you want to look at this. If the knight is on c3 and if the bishop is on c4, well, you can make this kind of a sacrifice. However, just be careful. I've often seen that when this bishop is on c5 you cannot make such a sacrifice because then the knight will have every chance to capture on c5 and then you would have uh, given up two pieces getting one piece in return so that doesn't happen when your own bishop as black your own bishop is on c5 then that does not happen point to be noted guys point to be noted okay that did not happen i believe in the game what happened after bishop c4 yes there was this this Black player did take the, the knight and in our game, white player straight away threatened the checkmate. So it's very easy to see this checkmate here. Um, let me show it to you. This is a simple idea as usual. The bishop support, queen takes f7 is checkmate. So this is for the B batch guys. If you are with us, you should understand. So A batch guys. Now what's happened here? Uh, checkmate threat and so black played knight back to d6 multi-purpose move not only saving the mate on f7 but also attacking the bishop on c4 well you can call this is a multi-purpose move always a single move but with the double intentions 
What happened then? White dropped the bishop back. Of course, there's no question of taking on f7 because in this case, the f7 pawn is protected twice and defended one uh protected twice and attacked twice i beg your pardon so you cannot go ahead and take on f7 bishop e7 was played by black and white player played d3 trying to bring the bishop in the in the game here what did black player do castling castling was done here knight to f3 Probably white also has developed a piece. The intention is that he also would like to castle as soon as possible. Knight c6 by black. Knight g5. What is the logic? Why knight g5? Very important, guys. Uh, hello, Manoj. Thanks for joining in. Our viewer from Madhya Pradesh. Welcome. You are a very good addition. You joined us yesterday. We are very happy to have you with us. We've just barely started uh, the game. It's a study game and enjoy. Thanks for joining us, uh, Manoj. So we were on to this particular move, Knight G5. What's happened after Knight G5 is there is this threat. Queen takes H7 checkmate with the help of the Knight's support. So black clearly cannot do uh, you know uh, black cannot overlook this threat it's simple checkmate threat so black played h6 and mind you there could have been bishop takes g5 after which there is bishop takes g5 which is uh, exchange of pieces but then there is you uh, mind you that this pawn is pinned by the bishop so clearly not that oops so clearly queen e8 and later you can have knight d5 with the threat of a fork so it's very aggressive for white if black would have taken on g5 so black played h6 instead then what was white's response white played the move h4 okay now taking here will not help simply because it's made in two moves here it is from this position, it's made in two moves here. Doesn't matter what black does, made in two moves. I will show you very quickly. H takes g5. Now the threat is very simple. Queen h7 or queen h8, checkmate, the support of the rook. Mate on h7 and mate on h8. And there is absolutely no way that the mate can be stopped. So clearly, clearly, after h4, black cannot take this knight. This knight is immune. You cannot take that because after h takes g5, there is no way of stopping the mate on h7 or on h8. All right. So then what happens uh, here? So h6, yeah, h4, then knight e8 by black. The idea of knight e8 was to bring this knight on f6, kicking the queen away. That was the intention. And here, I want you to do some good calculation. The move is knight takes f7. Okay, knight takes f7. The queen is jam-packed. The queen is jam-packed. And now, if black does not want to give the queen away there is only one move which is rook takes f7 and it is here now as usual in our study games you know what we do it is here now that i am going to give you your allotted timing three minutes for you and in three minutes i want you to do as much calculation as you want at the end of these three minutes i'll join you again and we will take this on white to play three minutes of thinking time tell me what is the best thing to do for white here do your complete analysis all the best
Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Beg your pardon. I was on a mute. I'm sorry. Well, I have unmuted myself. Now you will see. Wait, wait, wait. I have unmuted myself. I'm sorry for that. So Queen H. I'm, I was saying King H7 is a possibility. So that is what is the thing. I believe now you should be able to hear me. So I was saying that in this situation, let me bring myself in the frame. There you go. So I was saying over here, queen takes f7 and everybody said king h8, king h8 and then queen g8 is made. Well, no doubt, but there exists a possibility of king h7. So I want the, the juniors to pay attention to those details. You cannot just look at and Rudra was surprised. Rudra, was, I was very surprised. You said it is forced. Rudra is, a, you know, in my opinion, Rudra, you are quite a good player. You thought it was forced. What about King H7? You didn't say that line at all. So here we go now. Let me show that to you. The line goes, well, King H8, Queen G8 mate is okay, but King H7, what follows is Queen G8 check, nonetheless, the Queen goes there, force move is King G6, that is forced, okay, then there is H5 check, then there is, King cannot take the pawn, of course, on G5, you have the Bishop covering it, you cannot take the pawn because of the Rook support, cannot go to these places, I guess there is uh, king f6 or king f5 then there is queen h7 check and then doesn't matter where the king goes let's say the king goes to g4 then there is queen e4 checkmate however over here if there is king f6 then there is then there are two ways of checkmating here find out Again, like the last time, there could be three ways of checkmating here in one move here. Checkmate in one move. How many ways can white checkmate black? In how many ways? From this position, white to play. How many ways can white checkmate black? In how many ways? I don't care about your lines. Enough about it. I've already shown you the answer. What I care about is what you show your concentration here. There are at least two ways white can checkmate black in a single move here from this position. See if you can see that. Okay, we have some answers. You're saying knight e4. And Queen G6, absolutely right. Queen G6 is checkmate and so is Knight E4. Those moves lead to checkmate. So let us go through this calculation again. Queen takes F7 check. Well, if King, let's say if King H8, Queen G8 is checkmate. But if King, G, King H7, Queen G8 check, pull the King outside, H5 check. The King will have probably two squares to go. We saw f5 where you go queen h7 check and then queen e5 check or we saw that if king f6 then there is queen e6 or knight e4 checkmate and the other variation is of course after this check you have king f6 as well if that happens then there is queen g6 immediate checkmate let us take the game right from the start the game began with e4, e5 and uh, knight c3 and knight f6. Bishop c4, knight took the pawn. But there is one way to continue where you take the knight, black plays d5. Then you drop the bishop back, black takes, bishop takes. This is one way it could go. However, the more powerful is what you know happened in the game. 
White played Queen H5, threatening checkmate. This is the checkmate that was threat threatened. Well, black saved that with the knight and also attacking the bishop. Bishop was dropped back. Bishop e7 getting ready for castling. d3, black castle, knight f3. So white is also ready to castle. Knight c6 and now knight g5. The threat is very easy to see. Queen takes h7, checkmate. Black cannot stop this by bishop takes g5 because we saw that after bishop takes g5 and queen e8, there is knight d5 which is very difficult to meet. So black saved the checkmate with the move h6 and uh, there was a trick that white had h4 where taking the, po taking the knight will not help because after h takes g5 there is a super mate on uh, h7 or h8 you cannot stop that so that knight is immune black played knight e8 with the intention of playing knight to f6 but white never gave any chance knight takes f7 the queen is smothered normally you have the smothered mate where the king is helpless here the queen is helpless so black took queen takes king h7 queen g8 check pull the king outside that's the theme here and after this, it's just a matter of technique. Alright, I hope that you enjoyed this. And now we are going to look at the first video here. Um, I'll, I'm very happy. Yes, Alison is sharing something with us. She's saying, Black Castle too early instead of Castle should have played Knight C6. That's right. Black could have done that. I completely agree with you. But having said that, weakness is a weakness if you exploit it. So it was good of white to look at the king. The king is checkmated on g4 and uh, the rook on a8, the bishop on c8 and the queen on d8 did not move. That's bad. That is bad. You know when things don't go right, they just don't go right at all. Okay. So time for us to go through our first video. We all missed the hub. I missed the hub. Alison will get to know more about the hub. The first video I'm going to share with you. Hmm, which one out of the three should I share? Let me see. The one I will share, I'll give you a little insight about this video. Okay. The first one I will share is of Atharva, but not Atharva Prabhu. We have quite a few Atharvas in our hub. This is Atharva Thakre. Just a kiddo, four, three and a half or four years of age. And uh, I was teaching him the checkmate with the queen. So when the king is stuck up on the eighth rank, how do you checkmate with the queen and the king? It is a lovely video. I'm going to uh, control the music, the volume of the music here a little bit because we should be able to listen to what he's saying. Reminiscence, pure gold. So, Alison, this is uh, what happened in the hub. Enjoy the video, it's a small video. Let's start with that. So, this is uh, the Atharva video. Okay, Atharva, so can you checkmate me from this position? Yeah? Okay, so let us start. Check off hands and I'll start. You can play now. Okay, so I guess I have no option. You're pressing the clock as well. Very good. Should you press the clock with the same hand, Atharva? You should? Very good. You know this rule. Okay. So slowly but steadily, you're approaching the checkmate. Okay. Now, now, can I go with my king on H7 here? Can I go there? Will it be a legal move or an illegal move? It will be a check. So can I make that move? Can I go here? No. Okay. So I guess I'll have to go here. Oh no. Now, how will you checkmate? Amazing. Very nice, Atharva. Now one question. Can, I, can my king take your queen here? Can I do this? Why not? Because queen has support of the king. Sure? Is it checkmate? Wonderful. Thank you so much.
Um. Okay, so now I have unmuted myself. Let me know, let me know if the video was very clear. That is very important. Did you listen to the video properly? Let me know that. That's very important. Yeah, sure. Alison, you're right. So I was saying, yeah, yes, thank you. What I was saying is he was very happy and excited when he when he got that last move, which was Queen G7 checkmate. That was amazing. We'll watch that video one more time. Just see the spark in the eyes. I know my king was already on the back rank. But then for a kid to get that and to press the clock, answer the questions like, no, you cannot take the queen because the queen is supported by the king. That was something amazing. I like that. So let's listen to it one more time. If there was any disturbance uh, at all, let's, uh, I'm sorry for, you know, muting myself there because the video was going on and I had put myself on mute. Apologies for that. So let's watch the video one more time and then we will go to our study game number two. Let's watch it one more time, guys. Observe the spark in his eyes, okay? Okay, Atharva, so can you checkmate me from this position? Yeah? Okay, so let us start. Check off hands and I'll start. You can play now. Okay, so I guess I have no option. You're pressing the clock as well. Very good. Should you press the clock with the same hand, Atharva? You should? Very good. You know this rule. Okay. So slowly but steadily, you're approaching the checkmate. Okay. Now, now, can I go with my king on h7 here? Can I go there? Will it be a legal move or an illegal move? It will be a check. So can I make that move? Can I go here? No. Okay. So I guess I'll have to go here. Oh no. Now, how will you checkmate? Amazing. Very nice, Atharva. Now one question. Can, I, can my king take your queen here? Can I do this? Why not? Because queen has support of the king. Sure, is it checkmate? Wonderful, thank you so much. Magnificent, is it not? That spark. And he was so happy to checkmate. After that, he always insisted that it should be me with the king and he with the king and the queen. It's amazing, such memories. We are, uh, we have not met in the hub for the last three months now, but uh, yeah, everybody misses the hub. If you are ready, we will go now to our study game number two. And uh, uh, Pratik has just joined us. Pratik said that uh, I was late. I'm sorry. Okay, fine. Normally, you shouldn't be late for an online lecture. But whatever the reasons are, maybe there was a school session or tuitions or whatever online class. Fine. Welcome. You, are, you should now be here with us 100%. We are going to start with our game number two here. Let me start with game number two. This is also from the white side. And let me start. Yeah, so white's perspective. This is known as what defense, guys? This is known as what defense? What defense is this? What is the name of this defense? It has a name, right? This one. Yep. 
I think Saumitra J have answered correctly. This is known as the Philidor defense. Now, what happens in this Philidor defense is that knight attacks the pawn on e5. Normally, you have black playing knight c6. But here in this case, black played d6 in order to defend the pawn on e5. This is not one defense that I recommend because then you get your own bishop on f8 kind of blocked. So I don't like that. But anyway, well, played at even the tournament level. It's okay. So this is the Philidor defense. And white played the move that I would play here. I won't go for the d4 center break. If it's the Philidor defense, bishop c4 should be white's third move. I repeat that if it is the Philidor defense, white should go ahead and play bishop c4 as move number three here. The idea is straight away, of course, to get ready for you know castling, but also aim at f7 very early. Now here black played bishop e7, which is quite standard if you play the Philidor, and d4, which is known as the center break. Here white had two options. He could have played uh, castling as well. There were quite a few options, even knight c3 sometimes. So those are all good from white's perspective, but white chose to break the center. This is called breaking the center. I repeat, this is called breaking the center. Very, very important guys, breaking the center. So what happens now? Uh, after this, black played e takes d4, knight takes d4, the, the pawns are exchanged and knight to f6. Black is also getting ready to castle and the knight is attacking the e4 pawn which is without a support. So as a beginner always ask yourself what is my opponent wanting to do? My opponent wants to take on e4, you should take some action. So knight to c3. So now you can see that if knight is attacking the pawn, well white has decided to support the pawn. This is how you play. Pay attention to opponent's last move. Black played knight c6, white castled because the knight was attacking our knight but is already defended by the queen. No worries there. Black also castled. Well at this moment the game is quite even. There is no problem here. Black so far has played well. That's why the lecture becomes important because an opportunity may suddenly come up. I repeat, the opportunity may suddenly come up and it is then that you have to be aware, alert with that presence of mind that, okay, this is my opportunity and I have to do something. So far, the position is perfectly in the balance. There's no problem here. Black is not in any sort of problem here. What happens? H3. So maybe white does not want to tolerate any of that bishop g4 nonsense no nothing rook e8 rook e1 perfectly in the balance this game knight was dropped back so the intention probably is to go to b6 trying to put the bishop on some other diagonal or change the square then white played the move that i want you now to calculate the complete line you have three minutes for this. Don't just tell me I got it. Try to tell me the entire line. You have three minutes for this. Do as much calculation as you can. Okay. All the best. Your time starts.
okay the time is up okay so let me first of all clarify a few things in the chat okay uh, Manoj uh, the ID that the kids are using often belong to their parents so he is Rupak actually and uh, Rupak you shouldn't mind when people address you uh, as Vidula Gokhale because that's your ID everybody would assume that so uh, he's a good addition and Manoj you're welcome anyway I have got good answers here. I am very, very happy. Alison also presented a very nice view that the queen again is short of squares. Vihang gave the answer. Ankit, I appreciate that you are not feeling all that well, but still you are participating. Very good indeed. Ankit, very nice. Very nice. Um, Saumitra as well. I am very happy. Namish, uh, I use the software Chess Base. I have purchased it. Chess Base. That's how I. You, you know have the games and I'm able to change the games so I use the software chess base anyway hope I have answered this and uh, Manoj did you try the answer what happened did you try the answer did you find a line Manoj no okay it's okay now what happens is I will show you that your calculation is so precise I'm so happy when the calculation is precise Alison gave us a very nice clue and that clue was that the queen is short in square so it's bishop takes f7 and uh, it's a simple fork is it not i mean the, it's just easy to see here so king took on f7 knight to e6 and now queen again in our second game here the queen is again smothered in the earlier game as well we saw that the queen was smothered so it's not the king it's the queen getting smothered today what's up and uh, black thought that maybe he can get away with another now similarity between the last game and this game there are a couple of things number one in the last game as well we we drew the king forward into our camp here as well you see that the king was on g8 then on f7 and now the king is on e6 so pulling the king forward the second thing was the queen was smothered even in the last game the queen was smothered so kind of pattern here that's why i select the games with some similar idea that can lead you to calculate better there is queen d5 check force move is king f6 and yes, queen f5 is checkmate. So congratulations to all those who thought of this, even with the variation. Even with the variation. Okay. No problem. Manoj, you will find it. As long as you enjoy this, I'm okay with that. Enjoy the calculation. Look how the king was brought forward. First with the bishop sacrifice, then with the knight check. So let's study this game one more time. Uh, let me take you to the board. We are going to study this game one more time, guys. Let's take it back all the way. Yes, so e4, e5, knight f3, d6. I've told you that this is the Philidor defense. e4, e5, knight f3, d6. Then bishop c4 is my favorite move. White player did go for that. But there is knight c3 and d4 as well. Black played bishop e7 to which white has three good moves but white chose to break the center. Remember what I'm saying. White chose the move d4. It's called breaking the center. That was chosen. And then there was exchange of pawns. Knight to f6. Attacking the pawn. White played knight to c3. Defending the pawn. Then there was knight c6. Attacking our knight, but our knight is already protected by the queen. So white continued with castling. Black also castled. Then there was h3, and this move, rook e8, rook e1, is aimed at getting the open file. And after knight d7, you can seize this opportunity because now the queen is smothered. Look at the position here. This is this is what you have to. Uh, remember and this is where your presence of mind will come into picture this is very interesting and immediately bishop takes f7 check well the better idea in my opinion what it, it, it's it, it was better to take the bishop for example if king h8 well that's worse that is worse because then still knight e6 comes anyway so if some of you were thinking be honest about it if some of you were thinking well let white just take the black rook the misery doesn't end there 
Be honest about it. If you thought, why did Black King take the bishop? Black King could have gone to H8. If that happens, well, knight e6, and clearly you can see that the queen still is struggling here. No need to take the rook first, seal the queen there. That's it. So this is incredible. So taking the... What happens if knight to f, f8? Well, that's even simpler because now knight e6 is a, a fork. So that doesn't help. Taking the bishop was the best option. And what happened after king took? After king took, there is knight e6. The queen is uh, smothered. So king took, drawing the king forward, as I've told you. And there is queen d5 check. And finally, queen f5 is check. I have no doubt that this was uh, wonderful and uh, is there a new addition to our viewership Swarup you say huh is that who is Swarup you're asking I don't know who, who is okay yes thank you there is a new viewer for us Swarup C welcome Swarup C uh, you're welcome to our live stream thank you thank you for your compliment and now back to our hub memory before we go to study game number three. This one uh, is a video where again there is this guy. I won't tell the name. The hub player should identify. The challenge was I think it was his uh, second session at the hub. Day two at the hub. And I had asked him to set up the board. So I had jumbled all the pieces. And I had asked him, a kid of three or four years of age, maybe three and a half, that's the average age of the new admissions. And I had asked him to set up the board correctly. So go ahead and enjoy. Let's see if he can set up and watch for the ending. I'm saying this, watch for the ending guys. The ending is just super. So this is the video and uh, let me take you Okay, there. Sir, well, not, so can not, you check me one. from this position? Okay. This one. Michelle? Yeah. Okay. So let us start. Check off hands. So I showed you this video. Now this Okay. One. Dishel, you have to set up all the black pieces here and you have to set up all the white pieces here. Can you do it? Yes. Okay. Let's see. Start. Do it. Very good. You want to draw the board closer. Very good. Very good. I must say you are very smart Dishen. Very nice. Almost done. Very clever. Very smart. Wow. So, Dishan, you're going to get all right, Dishan. You're going to get it all correct. All correct. Let us see. Looks like it. Okay. Very good. Mm -hmm. What's missing now? Bishop? That should be here. Now, is it right? Is it correctly placed? Look at white pieces. Are they correct? You want to make one change in white pieces. White, white pieces. Not black pieces. Black pieces are correct. What about white pieces? Do you think white pieces are set up correctly? Do you think? Make the change. Let us see if you can get it. What is the one thing where you go? Uh, the king should be in front of each other, is it not? Both the kings should be on the e file. Very good, very good, very good boy. So sweet, thanks.
I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I muted myself again, I'm sorry. My word, I'm sorry. I have unmuted myself, relax. I should take good care to unmute myself, guys. <sighs> I'm sorry. No defense, I'm sorry. Crazy. Now can you hear me? I'm sorry. I have no defense. What happens is I mute because I want to play the video and then I don't unmute. I am sorry. Apologies. I am sorry. There is no defense. I mean, this is basic. I should do this. I'm sorry. Uh, apologies. Sincere apologies. I will try not to repeat this. Okay. Anyway, I was saying, now I'm sure you can listen to this. I am saying that the the ending was very important because he messed up the king and queen position and that's the one thing that the the new guys should know they always get confused with the king and the queen the queen stands in her own color so white queen in white and black queen in black so at day two well he could do that and I'm, i was very happy the enthusiasm was there oh no problem Okay, again, I will say that uh, no, it is my duty. I should I should understand that it, I am on mute. The logic of muting myself is I want to make the video sound very clear, but I should unmute myself. All right, enough. Uh, we will now go to our study game number three. I hope you are ready. So this is going to be study game number three. This was the game that we just saw, guys. And uh, the study game number three, again, from the white's perspective, and what defense is this? Kindly tell me what defense is this? Game number three now. Game number three. What def what defense is this? Don't just tell me Sicilian. Don't just tell me it's Sicilian, guys. What line of Sicilian is it? Oh, that was horrible spelling of Sicilian, I must say. Jai, you also misspelled it. Is it the French variation or is it the Taimanov? I think it's Sicilian Taimanov, is it not? What's the correct spelling here? O-M-G, right? It's Sicilian Taimanov, guys. S I C I L I A N Sicilian defense, and uh, you can say that it is Taimanov variation. Yeah, sure. Yeah, if it if there is d4, of course, which will happen in the game d4, and then it is exchange of pawns. Then there is knight to f6, attacking the pawn, knight c3, defending the pawn. Pretty basic stuff. Now bishop b4. Now I always say this: whenever you have such a, whenever you, your opponent makes a move, you should always ask yourself, why did opponent make that move? So here is the logic: where well, black just played bishop to b4 because the knight will be pinned, and then black will be able to get the pawn on e4. So that's the threat. So whenever your opponent makes a move, always, always ask yourself, why did my opponent just do that? Is there a specific intention? And clearly, so the e4 pawn. And this is what white played. Now, this is so interesting. This is so interesting because he allowed the capture, but there is a fork now. There is a good idea here. So the fork is queen d4. The queen's attacking the bishop and also attacking the knight. But black had thought this, I'm sure. So why did black do that? Because black thought, hey, it's a fork, all right. But first I'll take a piece, give the check. And after you take, now I'll be able to save the knight. So at the moment, black looks reasonably okay here. At the moment, black looks reasonably okay here. But now listen to me very carefully. At the moment, 
black in this position looks perfectly okay it looks like black is not in danger at all so harmless this position if you put this position in an engine you will get it as plus three at least plus three white is almost a piece up here almost there are many good ways for white to continue here the one chosen by white player in this game was bishop a3 now i want you guys to tell me in the chat i want you to tell me in the chat why did white play bishop a3 why bishop a3 you have to tell me that Why did white play bishop a3? Absolutely the right answers. Absolutely the right answers. To stop castling is the right answer here. Now Manoj, I'm not sure you know of this uh, rule. Manoj from Madhya Pradesh. I don't uh, know whether you have heard of this rule here. What happens is when you have a square controlled by the opponent's piece, you cannot go ahead and castle. I don't think uh, everybody knows this rule, especially the beginners. So that's the one important rule here. To stop castling is absolutely the right answer. I am happy with the students. And uh, Manoj, I'm sure that you know this rule. If you did not know this, well, now you know this. To stop castling indeed was the motif. Knight c6 by black trying to attack the queen, winning a tempo. But that's not going to happen here. Black is definitely worse here. Queen f4. Now always understand, every move there is a threat. And queen f4 as well, there is a threat. So what is that threat? The threat is knight c7 check. We have the support. Also knight d6. Knight is looking to control c7, d6 with the check. All is looking good. No doubt about it. You can go ahead and ask the question, Manoj. You can ask the question. I will answer it after the video. But go ahead and ask the question, Manoj. You have a question, you can ask. Okay, so the thing is that white has a move e5 to stop all of that. So now what black has done is black has just uh, cut the connection. So now black can, white cannot really go ahead and play knight c7 fork because the queen will take. But of course, white can play knight d6. And here, white played the move king f8, which is more or less forced. There is king e7 as well. So from here, I want you to calculate what happens from this position. It's a, Let's say this is the position. I have already given you a start. So the first move is knight d6. I have already given you a start. So white's first move is knight d6 check. What happens if king f8? What happens if king e7? Do your calculation and I'm going to give you three minutes for this. Your time starts. All the best.
Okay, the time is up and yes, I was answering in the meanwhile, I was answering Manoj's question. Yes, if you are playing one e4 and black plays c5 as white, I answer that with the move d4. Check out that line. It is uh, a formidable attack against the Sicilian. It's a gambit line, so you sacrifice a pawn, but it gives you an open game. Since I am a player who likes open games, I am uh, in favor of Smith Mora gambit all the time. I play that against Sicilian all the time. So e4, black plays c5, that's a Sicilian defense. And then you play d4, that makes it the Smith Mora. And now for this one, what happens here? All are really making a good effort. Ankit, again, I am going to uh, appreciate you. Fantastic. Brilliant, Ankit. You're not feeling well, but still you are with us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Swarup, that you liked that video on uh, Sicilian Taimano variation. Watch also Omkar sir's lecture on uh, the, the opening principles. That's also good. And now for this position, guys. For this position, it is made in three moves. Tell me honestly if you calculated that. After knight d6 check, after knight d6 check, if, I beg your pardon, if king e7, I repeat, if king e7, then had you calculated that there is mate in three moves here? There is mate in three moves from here. After king e7, the king can go to f8, but then if king does come on e7, now there is mate in three from here. So what happens is there is knight f5 check. Now it's a double check. Again, going back to our discussion on the power of the double check. I repeat, the power of the double check. So it's a check by the knight as well. And it, the check by the bishop as well. The knight just vacated the square. So it's a double check. And what is the line to remember for the double check? We've done this in previous lectures every what every double check is a discovered check but every discovered check is not necessarily a double check in this case it is a double check which means that the king has to move and if you look there are two squares is it are there two squares is king back to e8 and king to e6 both lead to checkmate well king e6 leads to knight takes g7 check well, then you have king d5 which is forced and then there is c4 checkmate with a pawn guys checkmate with a pawn is and look at the king the king is right in the center so that's not what you want it's insulting it's rubbing salt on the wounds if if the checkmate is delivered by pawn by a pawn then it is really something that all the player all the players will dislike that i'm telling you Anyway, if here after this check, what happens if king e8? Well, that's also a possibility. Then it's just mate in one move. Well, knight g7 is checkmate. It's a lovely pattern, guys. Observe this pattern. The bishop is nicely covered up f8 and e7, while the knight has delivered the coup de gras. Beautiful checkmate. The delivery of the checkmate is just beautiful. So I was saying that after king e7 it is mate in 3, however after knight d6 check there is always king f8. Then what happens? Then there is queen c4. How many people spotted that? Queen c4 is very important. Queen c4. There is a checkmate threat which is queen takes f7 checkmate. There is knight, there is queen, it's always at uh, the threat f7. Queen e7 to stop that. Does he stop it? No. Now black is in deep trouble here. Notice that the queen is a goner because there is pin and the knight supporting that. So how beautifully did that knight come back? So the knight came on b5. The knight supported the bishop on a3 and the bishop is pinning the queen. This is beautiful. However, now if you are wondering, well, there could be a move like d6, well, that doesn't help because just bishop takes d6 and you continue the same thread. There is absolutely nothing to do. And uh, after this move, d6, bishop takes d6, but black actually in the game, let me show you. Black resigned here. I, this d6 move never happened. Black resigned in this position. 
This is a completely hopeless position. The best move here is queen takes a3 and after that white plays knight takes a3 and there is nothing much left for black to play in this game. Let us look for this. Let us look at this game one more time right from the start guys right from the start. So Sicilian defense. This is again for Manoj. Manoj if you are watching this this is for you man. Um, Manoj Kahar. If e4, if, if e4 c5 is what I see then I will always go for the move d4 then there is c takes d4 c3 d takes c3 and finally there is knight takes c3 that is how I play against the Sicilian defense you cannot play the Rui Lopez against the Sicilian what happens is that the pawn is already on c5 if you want you can go and search the Alapin defense you can you can play that against the Sicilian so what happens is you can play the move c3 over here so Manoj if you don't want the, the gambit line you can play the Alapin so c5 then you play c3 with the intention of getting d4 that's the Sicilian Alapin variation I repeat the Sicilian Alapin variation A L A P I N you can go ahead and find that google that a little bit yeah, e4, e5 line, then you can play the Rui Lopez, the Spanish game. But against Sicilian, if you don't want the Smith Mora or to gambit the pawn, then you can go for Alapin. You can also play Knight c3. That's also very powerful. This game, Sicilian Taimanov, the exchange of pawns, Knight c3, Bishop. And then there was this idea of the fork. Black took the Knight, it's a check. Pawn took the Bishop and Knight went back. Then there is bishop a3. I told you that the rule is stop the castling. Of course, the rule is that you cannot go past that square. So black cannot castle in this position. I've told you that. White uh, played the queen to, to f4. The threat, there is there are multiple threats. There is knight d6 and knight c7. Black stopped the knight c7 one. But after knight d6 and king f8, Queen c4 and to save the checkmate queen e7 and after knight b5 black resigned because the knights protecting the bishop and the queen is totally a uh, gone. Beautiful line you can always watch this video again if you want to take things even slower than this. Okay now back to our video time back to our video. uh why is there in the chat about no you can actually okay no problem Manojo welcome now time for the video again let me come on cam well the third video is so much special that's why I, I kept it for the last all of you listen to this this is nice this is again a kid but this one has come a long way I remember when I made this video of this kid that I'm about to show you now he had lost in the very first round of a knockout tournament I repeat the video that you're about to see is of a student who had lost in the very first round of the knockout tournament and I had asked him that are you sad are you unhappy um, chess is bad look at the positive response and this kid two days ago finished on the podium on leeches tournament so let me know if you if you know this guy surely you know this guy so the video that i'm going to share and i promise i will properly unmute myself okay Riyans, are you sad that you lost the first in the first round itself it was the first tournament i played He played well. And? Yes, I lost. In the next tournament, I played a bit better. Brilliant. That's the spirit. Thank you so much, Veda. Brilliant, is it not? And I am not on mute. Yay. I'm sorry. So now, again, we will watch this one more time. Just look at the spirit of a kiddo who has lost in the very first round of a knockout tournament. That means you have to go home. <laughs> you you lose in a knockout tournament you have to go home but look at the spirit look at the spirit 
he said he appreciated the opponent said that he played well the next time i will play better and you can you know that rayansh finished on the podium so this is a great thing for all the juniors to learn that if you have that right spirit you can come back you will lose of course there are players with bigger experience they play well but then as long as you have the right attitude you will emerge victorious and by the way there is one more line i have to share with you let me come on cam for that this is beautiful line uh bye rupak by the way you are leaving for the tuitions uh, bye rupak uh, i we will miss you because you have your study you have your tuitions the others i was sharing this line this line is very important the hands that don't clap for others normally never hold the trophy i repeat this line is very important juniors if you're listening the hands that don't clap for others normally don't hold the trophy themselves very important if you understand the message here normally you will have the kids they are reluctant to clap for others so um very very important very very important that you understand this let's watch that video one more time guys one more time and i'll again promise i'll not uh, go on that mute thing let's do this okay riyansh are you sad that you lost the first in the first round itself excellent he he played well and yes i lost in the next tournament i played a bit better brilliant that's the spirit thank you so much vedha in the next tournament i will play a bit better wow that is some spirit well if you ask me what keeps me going these kids keep me going this is absolutely amazing what great spirit that is by the way if shrinath is with us i'm not sure shrinath are you with us if shrinath is with us uh, this is the way your spirit should be this is exactly what you should learn he was also new some day to the hub and uh, well that's what you can do wonderful time to go to our last game for today the study game uh this will be i believe our game number 4 so i am ready i hope so are you this is our last game and okay this one is e4 e6 now what is this what is this defense what's this defense e4 e6 somebody had answered this as the answer for the previous question i think now that will hold true hmm vihang has misspelled his his own defense <laughs> that's right vihang it is the french defense all right manoj i hope you know this man this is the french defense very good and now what happened in the game was white continued with d4 black played d5 and this is the french advance variation i am not a big fan of that white has the following good responses white can play the advance not that it's the worst white can go for the exchange white can go for knight to c3 leading to vinaver if bishop b4 white can also play knight d2 with the tarash variation there are quite a few lines here for white to play my favorite is knight c3 however all the variations i've shown are good they're all playable there's no problem however you know what black would always want white to play that move e5 so after e5 black will just play c5 and attack the d4 pawn using everything he has that's typical plan that black has so um absolutely brilliant now here what ha what's happening is white played the advance and i said that this is the typical idea so c5 and uh, everything will be used now to attack d4 so you have c5 then you have queen b6 then you have knight c6 
everything will be aimed at the d4 pawn notice this pattern if white just pushes the pawn to e5 black will throw everything at that at the d4 square so very important guys so queen b6 knight c6 the c5 pawn already everything to attack the d4 pawn so what happened then now this is the surprise queen g4 what that does is that it actually kind of pins this bishop because there's oops because there's always this g7 pawn that is at risk i like this also because of these pawns that are just fixed here there is never a threat of the bishop attacking the queen so queen g4 is a very nice idea guys queen g4 is just awesome now the thing about the how how black goes about handling this is interesting now watch this black played knight to c6 with the plan attacking d4 knight f3 knight how do you write this move will you write it as knight e7 or knight g e7 guys you can type it in the chat is it simply knight e7 or should it be knight g e7 how to write it is it knight e7 or should you go ahead and write it as knight g e7 let's see if people can answer that should it be just knight e7 or should it be written as knight g e7 the beginners this question is for the beginners samitra absolutely you answered that knight g e7 thank you so much that is correct now the beginners should know why that is the case because both the knights could have come on e7 so while writing it while you you know you write down the moves while you write it you should not just write knight e7 you should go ahead and write knight g e7 because both the knights could have come on e7 so if you just write knight e7 it won't be good later if you replay the game how would how does anyone know which knight came on e7 so knight g e7 the knight which was on the g file came on e7 knight g e7 bishop d3 and now this is an important move knight f5 so look at the let's count one two three pieces attacking one two pieces defending attack three times and defend that two times the pawn on d4 the things are getting interesting white has done his calculation here exchange of pawns g6 well of course bishop can any day take that pawn but g6 was played bishop g5 queen c7 bishop f6 was a better move but white castle now knight took the pawn now why did white give up this pawn queen c7 was played that means black was attacking the pawn two times and white had this defended only once white saw that and in spite of this white castled and has offered the pawn uh, to black on e5 it is here that i am going to now give you your 3 minutes for the final time guys this is our last fourth game that we are studying today why did white give that pawn on e4 what is white's best move from here the continuation for white
Okay, so the time is up. Hmm. So what's the best answer here? Let's find out. What's happening in this position, guys, is that the queen, of course, is under threat here. So white continued in this game with the move. Knight takes and then queen takes. And now you have a beautiful finish, which is bishop b5 check. Notice the crisscross pattern here. You have got to love this. This is the sorry. This is the crisscross pattern. Both the bishops making a perfect crisscross, and it is very disastrous at times. Obnoxious, if I might, if, if I may say. Okay. Now, what did Black do here? Does the king have any square to move? No. Does Black have any other option? No. Black has only one move here. Black has only one move here. And the only move here is bishop d7. And now, and now, bishop takes d7 check, king takes d7, and now a beautiful finish follows after queen f4 check. Now, the queen is doing what the bishop was doing earlier with a crisscross. Okay? So, the, the queen here is doing what the bishops were doing earlier. And so, my point is that black has got the following moves let's find out what black has here uh black has two moves i believe black could go king c7 if that happens now my question and now here i want a quick answer in the chat if king c7 now what is the best move for white in this position the best move for white in this position guys let's see who answers first here In the current position, what's the best move for white? Um, um, no clues are required here. It's white to play here. What's the best move for white? And I think Vihang has the answer. I think everybody will get it. It's bishop, not f5, but f4. Not queen a5 check. The winning move is quite simple to see. The beginners, if you have observed this or if you found it yourself, you should give yourself some credit. Queen a5 check is okay, but look at bishop f4. That's not the best move. Queen a5, you can put this in the engine and find out. But I think bishop f4 is simply the best move here. Pins the queen and the game is over. Bishop f4 just wins the queen on the spot. The queen is pinned. Absolutely. So that's the best move. However, here there is another option of king c8. What happens if king c8? Now bishop f4? No. Now you have queen e8 check. And now it's forced. King c7. You have a choice. You could go ahead and take the rook. Do you want to do that? Or queen takes f7 is even better. What if king goes back? No, no, not there. But what if king c8? Okay, well, in that case, now we have prepared bishop f6. That's nice. I don't think he will, he will do that. It's a completely lost position for black. Let's say after this, if king c6, what happens then? If king c6, well, there's still bishop f6. I don't want to deliberate more on this because after this, black is completely lost with bishop forking the queen and the rook successfully. Absolutely. Jai, I suppose, had the perfect answer. Let's go back. This was the position. After knight takes, queen takes, bishop b5 check. This is what in chess is called a crisscross attack. Both the bishops are covering all the critical squares. And after bishop d7, an exchange of bishops, the queen will start doing what the bishop was doing. And here, if king c7, bishop f4 wins on the spot because this queen is a goner, completely lost here. And uh, if king c8, then there is this variation. And after that, you have bishop f6 successfully forking the queen and the rook. We will now quickly go to our first position. By the way, congratulations to all those who thought of this. Wonderful, really, really well done. And now we are going to quickly 
very quickly go to our last two positions for today there are two positions for us to achieve a draw white to play both the positions white should manage a draw two positions both white to play and white will be down on material but still white will have some way of getting uh, away with a draw i'm going to give you 3 minutes to do all the calculation okay all the best this is your first position it is white to play and i am going to allot you 3 minutes starting now Okay, the time is up, and uh, well, what is the answer here? Well, Alison gave a very, very nice, very subtle clue. We have to give up the rook, but in the sense that we have to keep challenging because Black would probably, in the first few attempts, deny. But we have to keep up the pressure, and once the rook is taken. then it is a draw but first comes a very important move i think a few of our students have actually done that um well by the way uh, ankit you have been said hi by manoj kindly respond to that this is to ankit manoj said hi to you because he is from madhya pradesh you are from kolkata we are in mumbai here so please communicate hi to manoj ankit you said hi to you please get back 
and uh, say hi to Manoj as well. He is also a regular now. By the way, uh, the thing is that here in this position, you have to remember that the, the first move is a beautiful check. You cannot get the draw without the first check. I'll tell you why. What happens is you want the black king over here on g3 just to get the correct stalemate position. At the moment, if you give your rook, your king has the move on f2, is it not? King f2 is possible. So the first move here is to give the check. Now black has no other move but, you know, to get to the square g3 here. That's the best. And it is here now that white just starts with the rook. Just wherever the rook goes, wherever the rook goes, white will just keep pestering. And the moment black takes the rook, guess what? It is still me. So this is very important for you to understand. Very important. All right, now uh, Itesh, you can also take uh, our leave because we will also finish soon because we are now down to the last position. Very important, the last position guys, last position for today. Why to play and get a draw? No problem Manoj, this is now the last position. Let me bring that for you on screen. Again, this is white to play. So let me get to the board. There we are. It is white to play and achieve a draw and final three minutes of thinking time. All the best. Okay, again, very subtle by Alison. She says, if it helps, white has to find a way to give up both the rooks and the queen to achieve the stalemate because white's king cannot move. And by the way, 
द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग हियर इज टू अंडरस्टैंड दट ब्लैक हैज थ्रेट एंड चेक मेट वाइट विल गेट चेक मेटेड इफ वाइट इज नॉट केयरफुल दिस इज द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट टू नोट गोइंग बैक टू मनोज स्क्वेरी Manoj wanted to know uh, the that in the last position black can win with you know put by pushing the pawns it was stalemate as soon as the rook was taken i will quickly show that before showing this answer okay uh let me go back to that previous position so this is only for you manoj enjoy this now what i'm saying is you're a regular viewer from madhya pradesh so let me go ahead and uh, do this pretty neatly here we played the move rook check and after king went here we are challenging and now it is black to play manoj so if black takes our rook well, let's say he doesn't take it first but okay fine even if he takes it doesn't matter the first attempt itself now it is white turn manoj it is white to play here and white has no moves white has no king f2 white has no king h2 the pawns checking but the white king is not in check so black has no scope to move the pawns i hope manoj now it is very clear that this is stalemate black cannot push the pawns white has no moves to make and he is not in check this is called stalemate so i'm sure that you understand now this is called a stalemate this is not checkmate it is white's turn to play and white has no move to make white cannot make a move that's why we sacrifice the rook manoj All right and now for this position This is the position and Alison was so right about it we have to give up the rooks and again the second rook and finally the queen but on g7 remember the threat now is that it's a fork So the black queen very important it's very important that there is this threat and the and whatever if the queen takes the same result if the king takes same result now again manoj this is for you manoj again this is over this is stalemate because it is white to play and white pawns have no moves to make they are stuck up and the king is super safe on h1 but then cannot make any move so this position is called a stalemate and manoj today you learn that this is stalemate very very important yeah and now we are going to bring this lecture to an end but not before we discuss what is up for tomorrow the action tomorrow we are going to have a tournament and saumitra you are here in the chat i suppose please make sure that you send a message on whatsapp the tournament details we are going to have it live here 6 o'clock tomorrow 1800 so manoj you are new so you should know that every friday we have a we play a tournament and tomorrow it will start at 1800 ist again the same time as today all the best to everybody and I hope that you enjoyed the videos of the hub and our students that was very nice memories and uh, we will meet tomorrow take care don't unnecessarily venture outside stay safe ankit do see your doctor this is for ankit everybody should wish ankit some good health tomorrow we will meet tomorrow 1800 hours 6 pm indian standard